the Chitauri are coming. Nothing will change that. What have I to fear? The Avengers. That's what we call ourselves. We're sort of like a team. Earth's mightiest heroes type thing. Yes, I've met them. Yeah, takes us a while to get any traction. I'll give you that one. But let's do a head count here. Your brother the demigod, a super soldier, a living legend who kind of lives up to the legend, a man with breathtaking anger management issues, a couple of master assassins, and you, big fella, you've managed to annoy every single one of them. That was the plan. Not a great plan. When they come, and they will, they'll come for you. I have an army. We have a Hulk. I thought the beast had wandered off. You're missing the point. There's no throne. There is no version of this where you come out on top. Maybe your army comes and maybe it's too much for us but it's all on you. Because if we can't protect the earth, you can be sure we'll avenge it. Hi, I'm Professor E. Welcome to the Robot Program. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use the Blockly workspace to code a sequence of actions for your robots. You're going to use action and movement and audio and put it all together into some sort of a scene or sequence that your robots are actually going to act out. This allows you to give personality to your robots and to actually have them interact with each other or appear to interact with each other. To do this, we are going to take a scene from a popular movie, Marvel's Avengers. So I have a script here, and to set the scene with our actors, we have Tony Stark, or Iron Man, and we have the villain, Loki. And if you haven't seen the movie, the only thing you need to know is that Iron Man here is trying to bide some time for the rest of the Avengers to kind of get it together and get down to where the battle is going on. So we're going to use two different laptops to control our robots, but first I'm going to show you how to make the programs using just one laptop. The first robot we're going to program is Six, and then we'll move on to JD afterwards. You can use whatever robots you want, and you can also control them using whatever you want. You could use your tablet, your phone, your laptop, whatever Easy Builder software you have available. To get started, I'm going to load the Easy Builder software, and I'm going to go into my bookmarks menu here and click on Example Projects. You want to open up the project that's the bear project for your robot. So if you're using JD, open the JD bear project. If you're using six, open the six bear project, Rolly, Rolly bear, and adventure bot, open the bear project for adventure bot. Just click the green open button and this will open up the bear project. The bear project is a nice clean workspace with minimal controls. And then we're going to connect to our robot. So let's turn on six. When we go down to our Wi-Fi connections, connect to our EasyBV4 connection, and then we click the blue connect button. Let's make sure he's got lots of space because he's going to move into the initialization position. Here we go. We're going to code our script in Blockly, so we're going to go ahead and enter the Blockly workspace. And we're starting with this blank canvas here, and all the options we can choose from are over here on the left. Now we have to consider, do we want our characters to speak before they act? Do we want them to speak while they're doing an action? Do we want them to move and then speak? And so you can decide whatever you want to have your characters do to act out this script, just like real actors. Our script starts with Loki speaking. He says, the Chitauri are coming, nothing will change that, what have I to fear? So I'm first going to have him do an action, so he's a little bit menacing. And then I'm going to have him speak the line. He is the villain, so we want him to start off with something kind of spooky. So I'm actually going to have Six do his attack action. So I'm going to start by putting in movement, scrolling down to auto position. And I'm going to do auto position wait because I want him to execute the entire action before he starts speaking. Okay, now to add what he's speaking, I'm going to go into audio and say easy B. And I'm going to choose say easy B wait because I want him again to say the entire line before he moves on to the next action. 
I can add in the text. And I'm going to type in his first line. The Chitari whoop, are coming. Nothing will change that. What have I to fear? Okay, now it's a pretty long line. And this is a good example here. So he has to say the Chitari are coming. The Chitari is a made up word from the movie. So the robot might not know how to pronounce that word. So you can actually play with the way you spell the words to get the ex exact pronunciation that you want. So the next line is Tony Stark's line. And it's quite a long one. He says, the Avengers, that's what we call ourselves. We're sort of like a team, Earth's Mightiest Heroes type thing. That's a pretty long line. Now, while Tony is speaking, we want Loki to listen. So to have the robot listen, we actually have to use the sleep function to just to pause the script for however long we want. So I'm gonna go into utility, click on sleep for a thousand milliseconds. And now I can choose how long I want six to pause for. I know from doing some tests that I'm gonna want him to pause for about three seconds. So I'm gonna change this to 3000 milliseconds. You're gonna to have to play with these values depending on your robots and depending on um, how much you want them to maybe overlap when they're speaking or maybe you want them to pause before they speak to each other. You can change this to act out the script the, the way you want it to be acted. Once Tony has finished speaking, it's now Loki's turn for his next line. And I'm just gonna go back and forth between the characters, pausing when it would be Tony Stark's turn to speak. So I'm gonna go ahead and build the rest of the Loki script. Okay, this is the whole script now for Loki. And now we're ready to code all of Iron Man's lines. So to do that, I'm gonna use the same computer, but normally you would need to have two different devices to control each robot. You can actually save this script and share it with somebody else who might be controlling the other robot. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first we're gonna go here, I'm gonna click Save Workspace, and this is gonna save just our Blockly workspace. So we're gonna give it a name, I'm gonna call it Loki Script. And you can see that it's gonna be saved as an easy Blockly file. That'll be the file type. So I'm gonna clear my sketch. Okay, so someone else is starting from this blank canvas and you want them to control one of the characters or to tweak some of the code. You can go in, click Load Workspace, and bring up Loki Script, and open. And here's all the code that we had before. To execute our script, we're gonna click the green start button on the left-hand side. And if you wanna see the code that has been generated by this Blockly script, you can click on the blue code button. And this shows you the code that our robot is actually executing. Now that we're done the script for Loki, we need to build the script for Iron Man or Tony Stark. And then afterwards, we're going to juggle the sleep times to make sure they're not overlapping too much with each other. So it's kind of a three-stage process. So it's Tony Stark's turn to have his script written. And he's not the first one to speak, right? So Loki spoke first, so we have two options. We can either put in a sleep command at the very start for the length of time that Loki was speaking his first line, or we can just click start to run the Tony Stark code whenever it's ready for him to speak, so whenever his first line comes up. So there's two different ways to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and just start with his first line. And some of his lines are a little bit long. This is a good example of how you can actually break up the script and have him do actions in between. The first thing I want him to say is the Avengers. And I want him to speak it fully before moving on. So I'm gonna choose uh, say easy B wait and put in his text. It says the Avengers in response to what Loki had said. And now I want him to do an action. And while he's doing this action, he's going to move on to his next, next part of his line. So I'm gonna have him point like he's pointing to the sky or just pointing to say the Avengers. Auto position point. So while he's executing point, I'm then going to have him speak and I want him to finish this next part of the line before he moves on to the next action. So I'm gonna choose say easy B wait. And I'm gonna have him finish the line. It's a bit longer. That's what we call ourselves. We're sort of like a team. 
Earth's Mightiest Heroes type thing. So this line is a good example of how Tony Stark speaks as a character. He's got a little bit of sarcasm in quotes. He's got some semicolons to break up longer lines. So make sure you're typing it in exactly how you want your robot to speak it. It might need some adjusting to get it exactly how you want it. Okay, now it's time for Loki's line where he says, yes, I've met them. This is just a short break, but he is going to do an action. So remember when we're putting in our sleep functions, we need to leave room for the other character to do both their speaking and their action, unless you want them to be moving while the second character is speaking. So I know I need to sleep for about three seconds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and build the rest of Tony Stark's script, and then we'll be ready to adjust the interactions between the two. I've completed Tony Stark's script. Uh, it's pretty long. He's got a lot of really long lines, so we can see that some of them are broken up, so he'll move or he'll do something. Uh, maybe I wanted to punctuate something, so I had him do an action in the middle of a line. And that's the great part of doing this activity is you can really get creative with what you're having your robots do and how they interact. So now we need to test the sleep commands to make sure they're not talking over each other. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your robots and you're gonna wanna execute the script for both of them at the same time and see when they overlap. So we're gonna start Loki speaking and then when it's time for Tony Stark to say his first line, we click start and we see if they overlap at all or if we want them to overlap and just adjust those sleep milliseconds accordingly. All right, so we start with Loki. The Chitauri are coming. Nothing will change that. What have I to fear? The Avengers. That's what we call ourselves. We're sort of like a team. Earth's mightiest heroes type thing. Yes, I've met them. Yeah, takes us a while to get any traction. I'll give you that one. But let's do a head count here. Your brother the demigod. A super soldier. A living legend who kind of lives up to the legend. A man with breathtaking anger management issues. A couple of master assassins. Using your robots to act out a script is a really fun way to show off what they can do and to put on a little performance for your friends. Get creative and show us what you create. In this episode, we showed you how to combine audio and positioning and movement to create a coherent scene with your robots. By syncing up all of these different commands, you can make it look like your robots are interacting. And in this episode, we use the Blockly workspace to code a scene from Marvel's Avengers. You can mod your robots to look like they're wearing costumes using hot glue and Sharpies and any craft supplies you have lying around. In another episode, you can see how to do that and how to remove the craft supplies so that your robot is clean again. We always want to start with a freshly charged robot and we'll connect as usual to Easy Builder. Start with the bare project for your robot to have a nice clear workspace to get started from. The Blockly workspace has lots of different options for controlling your robot. The gray menu shows you the logic, the movement, the audio, and all of the different options you have for control commands. You can start your code using the green start button. You can clear your sketch and you can even create a variable. You can save your workspace, which allows you to share your code with others. And you can also load Blockly workspaces right into your projects. And then we have the green and black console window, which shows you how the code is executing as it progresses through the commands. If you wanna view the script that has been generated by your Blockly code, click on the blue button and you'll see the easy script. We used a couple of different control commands throughout this episode. Let's take a look at one of our code examples to see what we did. This is the code that we used to control Tony Stark or Iron Man. We started off by using an audio command. A wait audio command will make sure that the entire speech is executed before moving on to the next control command. We also used auto positioner to 
execute the auto position actions that already exist, and we could also designate a timing for how long we wanted those to run for. We can also add blocks that allow us to control movement, such as moving forward and moving backwards. We can control the speed of each servo, or we can designate it a time limit to how long the movement will occur for. A new function that we used in this episode is the sleep function. This can be found under the utility tab on the gray menu within Blockly. The sleep command allows you to designate a number of milliseconds for which your robot will do nothing. It will just pause and go to sleep in its current state. We use the sleep function to make it look like our robots were interacting. It allows them to pause while the other robot is speaking. This gives us a chance to have the robots do different lines of text and to do different movements without overlapping or to control the amount of overlap that we have between the two different robots. To determine how long your robot needs to sleep for, it's best to use both of the programs of the robots you're trying to control, and you might have to do a little bit of trial and error to see how long you need to put your robot to sleep for. If you know that a particular command is going to be run for at least two seconds, you're going to need at least 2,000 milliseconds within your sleep command. When coding an example from a movie script, we're using a lot of text. Remember that a robot doesn't always read text the same way humans do, so you might have to adjust some of the words or some of the letters to get the pronunciation that you're looking for. We store the text as a string variable within our program. That means we have a variable that is a sequence of characters, and it allows us to store all of that character information as one chunk of text. So then when we tell the robot, say easy B wait for this string, it knows it needs to read all of the characters that are stored within that single string. Our program uses multiple strings because we have multiple lines of text. If you want to share your programs with the EasyCloud community, make sure you save the workspace within your project so that others can access the Blockly workspace that you've created. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. How will wait functions affect actions and speech? Which utility function can be used to pause the robot? What variable type is used to store the speech text? Find the answers at therobotprogram.com.